March of 2017, I was anchored in my 17-foot open sailboat with only oars for power and a foot and a half of water outside Flamingo on a calm early morning in Florida Bay. I checked the marine forecast, perfect conditions to get home one day before a storm was to howl in from the north. I row for the first hour, the wind builds, until it becomes a dream, a once in a lifetime sail. The southerly breeze pushes me 106 miles in 15 hours. With a phone call update, I tell my wife about the great progress. I'll be home a day early, arriving later this evening, so don't wait up. By 9 p.m., I was a mere 15 miles from home, a few hours of night sailing, the kind of sailing I love, the starlight reflecting on the water, or the moon lighting the night, a kind of peacefulness not felt anywhere else. But the forecast had been wrong. It started to gently rain, and I knew this was trouble. The wind slowly diminished. With difficulty, I had to lay on the bottom of my open boat, slip on my dry suit, zip up the long zipper across my chest. Just as I finished double reefing the main and mizzen sails of the cat catch rig, the powerful northerly hit with the sound of a freight train. I raced forward and lowered the main, now heaved to in the gathering waves. She's a true sea boat, keeping me safe even in these conditions. The night was inky black. I started to hear a very faint sound slowly getting louder. It dawns on my slow mind. Waves are crashing on a beach. I'm on a lee shore. Struggle forward, I raise the reefed mainsail, gently ease the sheet, and the crashing noise fades, leaving just the howling wind. Again, I can see nothing but feel the boat rise and lower and the going waves. The wind moves from south, southwest to north in less than 20 minutes when a large wave tosses me sideways and down the comer's face, totally out of control. Sitting on my thwart, the faint white color of the breaking wave is above my head. From then on, I focus on the vague lighter color rolling toward me, ease the tiller so bow faces each wave. I sail upwind. One tack takes me out to sea into the inky black stormy night. Keep focused. A primal fear I have to control builds, and all I can take is a half an hour in that direction. Every five minutes I look at my watch, hoping the 30 minutes is up. With one hand on the tiller and one hand on the main sheet, I carefully pick my spot to bail, water splashing over the rail, tack back to the northeast, toward the lights at the shore, somehow making me feel safer. Almost as if lighthouse are showing me the way. Keep focused. Tack after tack, hour after hour, sailing out to sea into the stormy darkness, trying to control my primal fear, back to the light, yet I'm barely moving forward. Dawn brings a new fear. For I can see the storm. The sea is almost white with breaking waves. 15 miles from home at 9 p.m. 16 hours later, I glimpse the boat ramp in the distance. My wife on shore had decided to call the Coast Guard as she was crossing the bridge. While on the span, she looked over and saw my little white sails, turns back and races to the public boat ramp waiting as I carefully plan docking in the storm. I heave to, prep my bow and stern lines, rubber bumpers over the side. I slowly sail up to the dock, ease the bow into the wind, drift in. But after 31 hours of no sleep, I've misjudged. The piling just out of reach, powerless to drag anything. Blown toward the shore beside the ramp, I jump into waist-deep water, keeping the bow headed seaward, off the sandy beach. Somehow, I get a line to Kathleen, 
as she pulls the boat around to the dock. Only after getting the boat on the trailer was this adventure over. Did I mention I'm 64? Thank you.